Very good morning, everyone. This is Rajendra and here joining from Market Calls and welcome everyone to Kickstarter series on uh, market profile. So we are in the part three of the session. I hope the audio and video quality is good enough to start. If yes, simply type yes in the chat box so that we can quickly kickstart with the session. All right, great. Thank you, Gangadhar Rao. Thank you, Nirmal. Thank you, Vineet. Thank you, Naresh. And thank you everyone for the very quick confirmation. Without further delay, let's quickly kickstart with the session. So in today's session, the whole primary agenda is all about what are the trading references? Uh, what is the difference between intraday references versus short-term references? How traders can make use of the trading references? Understanding which is a good trade location and avoiding a bad trade location. And of course, uh, Nifty and Bank Nifty trade expectation based on the current trading references. So there is a small promo here before kickstarting with the session. Uh, we are conducting an uh, TradeH 2.0 mentorship program on market profile, order flow, and volume spread analysis uh, starting from this December 2nd onwards. It's almost an 80 plus hours of uh, institutional grade and intensive training to observe and understand the market conditions. The most important thing about it is like it's kind of a fusion approach to bring systematic thinking among serious traders to take emotionless and visual rule-based trading decisions. So TradeEdge comes with a live webinar as well as live trading room, uh, live analysis using market profile, order flow, and volume spread analysis. So there's a coupon code over here. You can use the coupon code LEARN5K to get 5,000 rupees offer, which is valid for the first five participants. If in case uh, you want to know how to go to the course, you can always go to marketcalls.in. Just go to marketcalls.in. From here, you can go and reach the course. At the top of the menu, there is a trade edge is there. So click on that, you'll be able to reach the course. All right. So now without further delay, let's quickly get into the session here. So first of all, let's try to understand what is a trading reference. In market profile, right, it is uh, it is represented as a reference level or a zone where it needs to be monitored for acceptance or rejection. So some of the levels can be a support, some of them can be a resistance. For example, let me try to pull up the very recent Nifty profile structure so that we'll get a fair idea of what reference levels are. If you see this uh, structure, right, you'll be able to see various lines which are uh, drawn horizontally. So some of the levels which are drawn horizontally, I'll, I'll, I'll try to show you. So this level here, I had marked this as a dominant buyer, right? It's a very interesting uh, and very important reference level. It's a positional reference level, which could act like an immediate support zone. And then if you scroll down on the downside, so there are some more reference level over here. Again, it's saying like dominant buyer. It's again, it is gonna act like a temporary support zone. So there are various temporary support zone where the market is defending. And then we have one more reference level, a dominant buyer level over here. So there is a dominant buyer level over here. And then this level is also a dominant buying level. I'm supposed to mark a line over there. This is a dominant buying level. And then here as well, we have a dominant buying level. And last but not least, the very bottom of the structure, 26th of October, is also a dominant buyer level. So that is where the inventory also went short to too short. Means kind of an oversold levels, kind of an extremely oversold level. Possibly any acceptance in the market could bring a potential trend reversal. That is the kind of uh, reference we got on 26th of, November, uh, 26th of October. Since then, we had seen multiple dominant buying levels. So the dominant buying means kind of smart money is coming and buying around those levels. It's a very interesting level to watch out because they will be acting like a series of supports. What Nifty had brought here is like, you know, Nifty had brought a series of supports in the form of dominant buying activity, in the form of poor lows, uncleared poor lows, by the way. Followed by that, we have a uh, dominant buying level over here. If we could see this, how it is defended as a dominant buying, it is kind of a visual level. Exactly a visual reference level has been, you can spot an exact visual reference level over here. If we could see the structure, this, 
low over here and this high over here are exactly visual in nature. Right? That's how it's acting like a temporary support zone. And uh, last but not least, there is a recent uh, support zone which created post Diwali. Post Diwali, we got this. At a one TPO difference, you could find this structure exactly precisely visual to the lows. That is the 9th November low and 13th November low are just one TPO difference. So wherever one TPO difference are just uh, exactly visual, such kind of references we call it as a visual reference level. It has a tendency to act like a dominant buying activity. In this case, it's a dominant buying activity though. You can also see that there is a dominant selling happened over here exactly but the next day itself it, it got taken out such kind of things uh, we don't take it uh, uh, much into an uh, resistance or something like that uncleared levels is what we consider as a support uncleared levels on the highs are considered as a resistance so such an important reference it is and very recently very recently we had a very interesting level called uh, rally highs so price opened with a very big gap up. It cleared one of the very important reference level, AB poor high, which is what one of the most important uh, target. Earlier, we had a resistance zones. I'll show you the resistance zones. Resistance are kind of a zones, typically, which is carry forwarded from here. So if you could see here, the, we had a lot of single print zones. So we have two resistance in play. So this is one resistance zone, very important zone here it is, which was kind of acted like a, a resistance for quite some days. And then we have another zone of resistance. Single print zones, we usually draw resistance in the form of zones. And if you could see the structure here, the resistance level has been defended for quite some days. It almost defended here, not even a single day prominent point of control formed above the zone, right? And even this level also. Of course, the Muhurra day is not displayed over here because it's an uh, it's basically not an uh, acceptance day also, Muhurra the trading day, even though it opened gap up but then slided down. But if you could see that the both the resistance has been convincingly broken on 15th of November, right? So that is a day we can say like, yes, the resistance has been broken. 6th of November, the zone is not broken. 7th of November, uh, zone is not broken. 8th of November, zone is broken. But if you could see that, the point of control is still inside the zone. As long as the point of control is inside the zone, it is not considered as an acceptance. Same thing goes with 9th of November also. 9th of November also, even though price had broken the zone a lot more uh, times, price is able to trade it above the zone. The point of control is still inside the zone itself. So again, uh, it's the resistance is holding up. And uh, 10th November, we had a breakdown because inventory went uh, long for too long and then there was a breakdown. And immediately price is also able to guard back up. Price entered inside the zone itself. In fact, uh, post Diwali, right? 13th November, which is on Monday, um, uh, Tuesday, I guess, right? So on that day also, price manages to go above the zone, but it failed to build a point of control above the uh, single print zones. So the only fair acceptance happened. These two single print zones are accepted with a very big gap up. In fact, uh, previous day, one day before to that, the US market went like almost 1.5 percentage positive. So Nifty had taken global cues from there and then it started straight away clearing the AB poor high. A very interesting uh, reference though. So that is the day these two zones get a clearance. We remove both the zones.
one important thing about market profile trading is identifying the trading zones plotting those levels and monitoring for acceptance or rejection as long as such a short term reference levels are not getting accepted right so we have to maintain those levels for example i'll try to give you an example if it is a short term reference when it will get accepted so i'll try to pull up an whiteboard session here so we learned that a reference level is nothing but what a line a plain vanilla line it can be an intraday reference or it can be a short term reference imagine we are having a short term reference a reference something like this if the reference is getting rejected it will be more or less looking like this so price goes and then it rejects it builds a point of control somewhere here it builds a point of control over here it's a point of control uh, in some cases price will be able to manage and trade a little bit higher but still more times the point of control would have been formed very closer to this zone so this is rejection this is clearly a rejection this is also the line get rejected it's not accepted yet so here we carry forward this reference here also we carry forward this reference however when a reference level is completely accepted building a point of control above the point of control here is totally building above now in that case we will remove this reference only in that case only the short term reference will go away until then the short term reference is likely to hold for a longer period a very interesting stuff though are you clear about uh, acceptance so this is what we called as an acceptance if you are clear about acceptance simply type yes so that i'll get a fair idea that you are able to understand so this is what we called as a acceptance acceptance always brings change change in trend all right nirmal says clear suresh says yes indrajit says yes and uh, Gangadhar Rao says yes. Naresh also says yes. Mridul Pandey says yes. All right, great. So we'll continue then. So that is what it happened on sixteenth, uh, fifteenth of November. We got a fair acceptance. Price is able to accept above the single print zone. That means that is a change in trend. there is a change in thinking so we have to think about longs in a very very short term and that is what it happened on friday as well uh, so interestingly what happened on last thursday we got a very strong rally and followed by that we had a drop a drop at the end so we had a strong rally and then we had a late drop in the markets now this kind of structure is what we called as a rally sorry pull back low it's not rally high i'm sorry for that it's pull back low pull back low is more of a important reference that is where exactly i had drawn the lines let me zoom it and then i'll show you so the l period low is exactly the pull pull back low any strong acceptance down below that will be considered as a important uh, change in the trend maybe it can consider it can bring short trades also but what happened on friday is the price dropped down below the pullback low and then majority of the time it spent above the reference point of control also 
formed above the reference do you think is it an acceptance or rejection what do you think if you think acceptance you type acceptance if you think it is a rejection you can type rejection so what do you think about it is it acceptance or rejection but pull back low is more of an intraday reference it is not a short term reference it is more of a intraday reference and it is valid only for only one day only means next day it is valid if it is forming on thursday it is valid only on friday only next trading session it will be valid it is clearly a rejection because one see one thing you need to think about it whether the reference is an upper reference or a lower reference right this is more of a lower reference so if it is a acceptance when you are thinking about acceptance so let me try to explain with the whiteboard here again let's say if this is my upper reference in this case price acceptance will be different at like price will be going up and trading above whereas if it is a lower reference if i am having a lower reference oops if i am having a lower reference for acceptance what i'll be noticing here is like price should go down and it should start accepting down it should build a point of control down below my reference level so here is my point of control here is my uh, reference level here is my reference level over here here i'm seeing a clear cut acceptance so both are acceptance here acceptance is happening on the upper side and here acceptance is happening on the down side right so this is something you need to understand very clearly if you see the current market structure what do we got this reference level is an upper reference or a lower reference it is a lower reference you see that price is still trading higher on 16th of november pull back low is more of a lower reference so for me acceptance to happen the structure needs to be broken down on the downside so price has to be broken down and it should start building point of control on the downside this is what an acceptance should look like and then it should start sliding down so that is how a clear cut acceptance looks like a strong acceptance looks like but what happened what happened price went down rejected and it started trading on the upper side this is more of a rejection i'm sure now you guys might be very clear about uh, what is an acceptance what is a rejection is all about so any reference level that you are monitoring if it's going to be a very very important reference level of course short term references are very important reference level sometimes intraday references like rally high pullback lows are also very very important reference level so first thing that you need to learn to know is like is the reference level is getting accepted or not right usually we'll be measuring in the in the form of point of control how where the point of control is forming is it forming down below the reference or it is forming above the reference so that is where we conclude that whether it's an acceptance or not think about bank nifty let's go to bank nifty here so bank nifty what do we say whether it's an acceptance or a rejection what happened on last friday it's clearly an acceptance even though we don't have any clear cut visual reference level even if i check the highs the highs are not having any visual highs totally the valley area is what we need to look around over here the valley area compared to previous day valley area see this is previous day valley area compared to that totally the valley area got completely lower so it's a classical acceptance it's a valley area acceptance valley area itself getting accepted down below the previous day's price action so that too from a major swing high acceptance happened probably almost bank nifty was down literally around 1 percentage right you know the reason why uh, i think yesterday rbi had tightened up the measures on uh, unsecured loans and credit cards 
So a lot more financial sector went down, particularly SBA card and a lot more counters went negative. And that impacted the uh, banking in the uh, banking and financial sector primarily. Mostly the NBFCs also. NBFCs are got affected tremendously because of the RBI. They introduced a new policy uh, in tightening up the measures of lending, particularly with the unsecured uh, lending. So uh, clearly, value area got built lower. So that itself a sign that it's an acceptance. All right. It's not a namesake value area going down. It's a classically price open gap down. And there is a clear building of value area building lower. More traders accepted lower price as a reference. So it's a classical value area acceptance. It's what? It's a value area acceptance. It's a very strong acceptance though. Acceptance. So you, many people might be wondering, uh, Bank Nifty went down, why the Nifty haven't went down? Let me tell you one thing for the people who are thinking like that. Not necessarily Nifty and Bank Nifty has to be in sync all the time. Yes, most of the components in Bank Nifty are the major components in Nifty also. So majority of the time it is expected to uh, Nifty and Bank Nifty to behave in the same way. If Nifty goes up, Bank Nifty also goes up. If Nifty goes down, comes down, Bank Nifty also comes down. That is what the expected behavior is. But even the correlation works between Nifty and Bank Nifty only 65 to 70% of the time. So remainder 30% of the time, they are completely different animals. Nifty can be uh, up, Bank Nifty can be down. Nifty can go negative minus 100 points, whereas Bank Nifty can be closing marginally positive. So those kind of things are possible on certain days, right? Particularly during earnings season, you can find this very interesting. Nifty and Bank Nifty will be moving on its own. Uh, where spe sector-specific activity takes uh, priority when it comes to Nifty. And Bank Nifty also most likely have a concentrated uh, price action. Uh, during the earning season. So particularly during the earning season, you can see this kind of price action uh, very much where Nifty and Bank Nifty remains uh, uh, completely moves in a different path altogether. All right, let's see some of the important uh, intraday versus short-term reference. So we're talking about intraday reference. We have uh, yesterday's prominent point of control, yesterday's half back, intra bar half back, yesterday's high or low, early morning high or low, today's point of control, AB power low, weaker lows, rally highs, pullback lows, 30 minute one time framing. So a lot more things we can consider as an intraday reference. These are very, very important reference that you have to consider for next day's trading. And then when it comes to short term reference, we have uh, Poor lows, poor highs, prominent point of control, spike references, P-shaped balance, B-shaped balance, single print zone, strong excess, daily one-time framing, failed auctions, stealth auction, G2, G3 references, anomalies, RP puck, weaker ORR and stronger ORR. So a lot more short-term references are in play. And it most likely uh, interesting to know about that. Am I dealing today with the short-term references or am I dealing with an intraday references? If it's a short-term references, primarily I'll be looking for acceptance or rejection. And if it is an intraday references, I'll be looking for, maybe sometimes I'll be using it like a kind of a potential target. For example, I'll show you a very interesting example here, an interesting in intraday references. One of the intraday references is the look at this reference here. So this is a very interesting reference. The reference from here. All right. So this is a very, very, very important reference. We call it as an early morning reference. Early morning lows. Sorry, early morning high. It's called as early morning high. So what is so interesting, you may ask, uh, I can say like uh, there are two interesting references at the same location. 
one is letter A period high and the C period low are exactly same. A period high is what we call as an uh, uh, early morning high. A and B period put together. First one hour, uh, I mean A period high. First half an hour high is what we consider as early morning high. The early morning high and C period low are just one TPO difference. Not only that, the C period low and exactly the K period high, again one TPO difference. So such a one TPO difference levels are there, then you have to carry forward these levels. This level, we will not be looking for acceptance or rejection, but we'll be using as a potential primary target reference. In a very, very short term, typically within one or two days, price will come back and revisit such kind of levels. A very interesting reference. Usually, if you find this kind of reference, you can use it as a potential target in a very short term. And the very next day, 17 November, uh, price came down and cleared those levels. More price is deviating. More price is deviating from those levels. More you can use it as a potential target. You can buy some put, puts and then you can look for some quick gains and then uh, you can step away from the game. The moment that uh, target has been done. Very interesting trading strategy also. So we will hear this kind of intraday reference we'll be using a, like a potential targets. Once the target is done, we'll be, we'll, we'll not be waiting for acceptance or rejection, right? So these are like tiny references. We call it as a micro references. When these micro references are getting cleared, we just move on. We'll just remove the reference and we'll move on to the immediate next immediate reference. So what is the next immediate reference? The pullback low is the important reference. But if you see the pullback low references also, right? So let's, this is the pullback low here. Just one TPO shy, we had this last Friday's L J period and M period, which is exactly visual to the pullback low. So we had a pullback low. And to the pullback low, now we are having a very visual reference level. So such a visual reference levels are likely to we say like it's it's kind of a weaker uh, it's a pullback low also it's a pullback low and since it is also visual on friday's uh, letter l period and letter m period uh, we can clearly say like it is also a weaker reference weaker reference means more or less we can expect within one or two days, we can expect a clearance. This level is most likely Monday. We can expect one more touch around this level, 19.790. So even though it's a pullback low, I'm still carry forwarding because the pullback low went like weaker at J and M period levels. So again, it's a very uh, interesting reference level to watch out in a very, very short term. So now how we... Uh, prepare for trading scenarios. So this reference level is going to be a very important reference level. So one thing on Monday that we need have to notice here is like, if at all any negativity has to happen, first thing what we need is acceptance. Acceptance from the valley area. So here is the valley area. So any acceptance, we have to see a drop and price dropping further, completely building lower value area brings a strong acceptance on the downside, right? So this is one point. But what if price opens inside the range, price opens inside the range, trades inside the range, it's spending more time inside the range itself, then you can expect a value area. On one another day, we can expect value area formation overlapping. Right, so where Nifty is going to open, where Nifty is going to spend more time, based on that, we have to determine what Nifty can do further. Right, of course, where the Nifty is going to open, we don't have in our hands. Uh, it it most likely depend upon multiple factors. Maybe it can be because of global factors, how the S and P 500 is trading in the morning, the ES Mini, uh, the US futures where it is trading. Or is there any local news impact? Or is there any global news impact? Or is there any news announcement coming in? So a lot more factors, it, it depends upon that and how the global queues are. So if at all there is a gap up, maybe 
we might see some more price action trying to trade around those levels and it might start building in value area higher also in fact that that is still possible is the selling opportunity started in nifty at this point in time if you ask me not yet for that we need to see some sort of an acceptance or some we need some sort of an odds of acceptance at this point of time we can only ev evaluate the odds the recent odds are like nifty can go back and touch this level this touching this level is always a possibility even if there is a gap up maybe still we may see a correction towards 19798 level that possibilities are there from a uh, from a monday trading perspective but what is not possible as of now is like is this an acceptance or not it is very difficult to clarify immediately that most likely we have to determine from the monday's price action but talking about bank nifty clearly there there has been an acceptance very clear acceptance happened in case of bank nifty let me take couple of questions here if you have questions you can post in the q and a section there is a question from anonymous attendee what are the red and blue zigzag lines within the profile oh that that one so if i split any of the structure i'll be getting these lines so these are like uh, today's point of control for example if you are talking about these lines these this is nothing but the today's value area high and this is today's point of control the green line is how today's point of control is migrating we'll be able to visualize those things and the uh, uh, blue line is nothing but what it is today's value area low okay so at a developing point of control developing value area developing value area high so that is how uh, you can go and split any day structure let's say i'll, I'll go back and uh, split one of the day structure here and then i'll show you how the point of control had moved for that particular day let me split the structure so automatically you'll be able to see those lines you can see that particular day how the point of control whether it has been migration has been deeper or it's a very small migration or not whether the value area has been migrated how the value area migrated is it a drastic migration or it just a small migration so those kind of analysis you'll be able to do from that Suresh is asking how we can identify G1, G2, G3 lows. So of course, G it, there is no G1. Uh, it's called G2 and G3. It's called Grade 2 and Grade 3. Uh, anyways, today is not a right day to discuss about it. Uh, we'll be discussing in our mentorship program mostly. So which is your data provider? My data provider is Excel Pix. Earlier, I was using Global Data Feeds. Uh, even there was some initial glitches uh, happen around the open. So to avoid that, I migrated to a new vendor. So I've been using Excel Pix for quite some time for the last six months or so. Uh, so far, the experience is good. Yeah. So what is that midline? Of course, midline is an intraday reference. Midline is nothing but high plus low divided by two. So if you are seeing a midline over here, which is nothing but it is also called as half back. So let's say so in this structure, let me explain what is a half back is all about. It's a very simple structure. Two days high and two days low divided by two so high plus low divided by two the center point is what we called as a high plus low divided by two it's nothing but the midpoint we called as a half back we called as a half back a very simple one all right
there is one more question from Inder. Is the halfback of each period really significant? Yes, it is really significant from an intraday perspective. It is called as an intra bar halfback. So there are two kinds of halfback. One is a halfback at each and every price level. So that you can see it, it you can see a dotted white color lines. So this is a uh, midpoint of letter A and this is midpoint of letter C. So each and every letter you'll be seeing in a halfback levels. Sometimes you can see trades get initiated exactly from the halfback. So more often, more, more and more intraday players, they come and trade around those levels, around the intraday references. It is very significant from an intraday trading perspective. Do they play as a target or resistance? Uh, usually they'll be acting like a targets, potential target reference levels from an intraday perspective. Very rarely it acts like a resistance. I guess that answers in this question. So Anonymous Attendee is saying for me, Excel Picks is knowing, not showing exact numbers on monthly contract, especially on order flow. I don't think so. So far, the numbers has been good. And so far, the experience has been good to me. I compared with Global Data Feed as well. So far, the numbers has been matching. All right, there is two more questions. Can we identify smart money, big money, buy levels using market profile? In fact, in the last session, in the Kickstarter part, part two series, we explained about smart money or big money where they buy, particularly using market profile. Uh, yes, you can identify. Uh, that is what the dominant levels I talked about that. You can please go back and refer the Kickstarter series to where you'll be able to get to know about the uh, how the smart money behaves in the markets. You'll get a fair idea how to think where the smart money players, they come and play around those levels exactly. All right, what is my expectation in Nifty? As of now, the long odds holds, but only if there is an acceptance is there. As long as I am not seeing any acceptance, I'm not gonna take any bearish view in the markets. The moment we are seeing an acceptance, that is a place where one have to think about the next downside reference level. The next downside reference level itself was once a support zone, it's going to be a target, which is like around uh, 19, 670 levels. So any acceptance, only if, if in case, if you are seeing any acceptance, I might think about 19, 470 kind of levels in a very short term. All right, so what else we have? More or less we are done with today's session. So these are the references. In, in fact, in our sessions, we'll be discussing about each and every references in a very detailed fashion in our uh, Traders 2.0 session. So if in case, if you are uh, really curious to attend our session, uh, consider subscribing to our mentorship program, which is like kind of 45 days of learning session where uh, detailed insights about market profile, order flow and volume spread analysis is what you can anticipate in our sessions. So thank you for coming by and have a wonderful Sunday. And uh, yeah, World Cup is uh, finally starting today around 2 o'clock, I guess. So have a wonderful Sunday and have a wonderful weekend. Thank you.